So today in Math 3, we're going to look at transformations of radical functions. Now we've been looking at transformations for much of Math 3, both first and second semester, with a bunch of different types of equations. This is just the same idea with radical equations. So all those rules you learned from the past can be applied to this as well. Okay. So you can see here we have A, B, C, and a D. All right. The A is going to be our vertical stretch compressions. The B is going to be our horizontal stretching compressions. The C is going to be the horizontal shifts. And the D is going to be the vertical shifts. So let's show you how those work again, starting with A. A is going to be a vertical stretch if A is greater than 1. So if A is bigger than 1, 1, it doesn't change the value of anything. Okay, so it's got to be bigger than 1. It's going to be a vertical stretch. Okay, if A is between... 0 and 1, it's going to be a vertical compression. Think about it this way. If it's a fraction that's less than 1, okay, but greater than 0, it's a vertical compression. Now, the other thing about that is if the A value is negative, that doesn't look like a negative. There you go. If the A value is negative, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay. Looks like a B. B, a horizontal stretch. If B is greater than 0 but less than 1, it's going to be a horizontal stretch. If B is greater than 1, it is going to be a horizontal compression. So basically the reverse of A. And if B is negative, you're going to reflect the graph over the y-axis. Okay. Looking at C, a horizontal shift to the left. If the C value is a positive number, you're going to go to the left. Now, this seems counterintuitive because usually positive numbers are to the right. But because the formula, if you'll notice, the formula says minus C. So if, if the C value is positive, it's going to be a minus in the formula. If the C value is a negative, a negative times a negative is a positive, which means it'll shift to the right. So if the C value is negative, you're going to go to the right. Now these changes to the C value, which move the graph, graph either left or right, are going to change the domain, okay? because it's changing where the, the graph is on the x-axis. It does not change the range. That's up to the D value. We'll get to that right now. So this, if you looked at the equation up at the top, you have plus d. You can see that up there at the top corner. Plus d. So if, if, the gra sorry, if the number is positive, the graph will go up. If the number is negative, the graph will go down. Because this is changing where the graph starts on the y-axis, it's going to change the range. Okay. All right, now let's look at these in terms of equations. So we have f of x is equal to the cube root of x. Now the fact that it's a cube root is inconsequential. It could be a fifth root, a fourth root. It doesn't make a difference. All of the values work the same based off of this is a radical function. Okay. So we have three things going on in this graph. We have a one-sixth out in front. That's the a term a negative on the inside on the x value, which is like a b, and then d here, which is going to be positive 7. So let's look at these three things. Okay, the first one is a vertical compression. Of 1 sixth. Okay, the second thing that is a reflection over the y-axis because it's inside the function on the x. And then lastly, we have a vertical shift and it's going up by 7. So those are the three things happening to the graph based on our equation. Okay? Let's look at the next one. f of x is equal to the fourth root of x. 
So again, we have one, two, three things happening. We have a negative sign on the outside here, a fraction being multiplied by the x term, and a negative 8 on the outside. Okay, notice that the square root sign ends here before it gets over to the negative 8, which means that negative 8 is on the outside. It's a D, not a C, based off of our, uh, form, our formatted function at the top. Okay, so again, let's go through these three things in order. That negative sign is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. The one-fifth is going to be a horizontal compression of one-fifth. And the negative 8 is going to be a vertical shift it's going to be going down by 8 so far so good let's try the next one we have three things going on here as well we have the 4 on the outside the plus 3 on the inside and the plus 9 on the outside of the function so starting with the 4 we have a vertical stretch Of four. The three is a horizontal shift. Now remember for horizontal shifts, it goes the opposite of the sign, so positive would go to the right, but this is going to go the opposite, which is going to go to the left by three. And lastly, we have a vertical shift. And it follows the sign, so the positive, positive nine goes up by nine. Okay, so try number four on your own, see what you come up with, and then come back to the graph. So pause the video for a second, come back to the graph when you're done, and see how you did. All right, so hopefully you pause the graph, you're back, and you can tell me the two different changes that are going to happen. We have the five, we have the negative two on the outside. So the five is a horizontal uh, compression. by 5, and the 2 is going to be a vertical shift. Since it's minus, it's going to go down 2. Okay, let's look at some other types of questions. Now, it's really important you, you pay attention to 5 and 6, because these are problems that are going to be somewhat like the ones on the summative later on. Okay, so we have a function f of x equals the fourth root of x. That's the red graph there. And then we have 1 half uh, times the fourth root of x minus 1. That's the blue graph. Okay, so we want to state the domain for f of x and h of x. Well, domain, again, is the x values that exist in this graph. Okay, so this graph, the blue, or sorry, the red graph, starts at 0 and goes towards the right, towards infinity. There's nothing before zero, like in the negative section. So we're going to start at zero. We're going to move towards infinity. And there's your domain. Now the h of x, the blue graph, has a negative one inside the function, which means it was shifted one to the right, which is going to change the domain. So now the domain is one, and it goes to the right, so it goes towards infinity. And there's your domain for the h of x graph. Okay. If we do the transformations for h of x, there are two. There's the 1 half and the negative 1. The 1 half is a vertical compression. I'll spell that right. Of 1 half. And then the negative 1 on the inside is a horizontal shift. And since it's negative, it's going to go to the right by 1. Okay. Next, number six, we have the square root of x is the red graph, f of x, and h of x is negative, the square root of one-fifth times x, and then plus three. That's the blue graph. So we want to do state the ranges. So the f of x, the red graph, starts at zero and goes up. So we're going to start at zero, 
I'm going to go up towards infinity. That's the y values that exist in the graph. For h of x, because this negative sign right here, that means the graph's going to flip upside down, and the positive 3 is going to mean it's going to start up at positive 3 over here. So we're going to start at positive 3. Actually, I lied. We're not. Because it's going down, we're going to start at negative infinity because you go from the bottom to the top. So it starts at negative infinity, and as it moves up, it stops at positive 3. It can't go any higher than positive 3 because positive 3 is the, the, the highest point of the graph. Okay, the transformations, there are three of them. The negative sign is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. All right, the one-fifth is going to be a horizontal stretch of one-fifth. Almost since, there we go. And then the positive three is going to be a vertical shift and it's going to go up by 3. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and um, change the graphs based on some transformations. So we have the cube root of x is shown. That's the graph that we've gotten there for number 7. We want to graph and label a new function called m of x, which is a translation of f of x that goes to 5 units to the right and 3 units up. Okay, so if we look at our graph, we're going to go 5 up, and three to the right. So think about this point right here. I'm gonna change colors. Think about this point right here, and then these two points. We're gonna move these three points up five and to the right by three. So one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. There's our points, and then we can graph it kind of like this. So there's the graph. Now we're going to write the, the uh, equation for this. Since it's a vertical and a horizontal shift, it's going to be m of x equals, it's a cube root of x, oops, you know what, let's do this. Nope, I lied. Uh, x minus 3 inside the uh, root sign or the radical, and then plus 5 on the outside. And that is your equation. For the next one, number 8, we have the square root of x shown. Okay, We want to make a new graph called a of x, All right, um, and it's going to be reflected over the x-axis and translated four units to the left. So we're going to make it negative, and we're going to go four units to the left. It's going to be plus 4. So <clears throat> um, that's our plus 4 is the part we're going to put in the equation in a minute. So four units to the left. If you think about some points here, we have a point here at 0, 0. We have a point here at negative, or sorry, positive 1, 1. It's reflect over the x-axis, x -axis, which means it's going to go um, upside down and 4 units to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then upside down. So that's what your graph will look like. And the equation, since it's a of x, will be negative square root of x, and then you're going to have um, plus 4 on the inside. So that's your equation. That's what it's going to be. I'll box it out. All right, and that is it. Please try the practice. Ask questions if you get stuck, and great.